Christian journey, we started when we accepted Christ. But our ultimate goal is to get to heaven. So we have to persevere to the end to get there. But the one thing we have to understand, as we're trying to persevere to the end, we have to endure some things. Amen. The endurance is what we have to deal with because as we're trying to persevere, we're going to deal, we have to endure some, some hardships on this journey. We have to endure some sickness. We have to endure some pain. We're going to have to endure being talked about. We have to endure being lied on. These are things that we're going to have to endure through the process. But at the same time, we, we still have to persevere. And so it, it reminds me of a, a weightlifter, and a weightlifter may uh, have three sets. He may say, I'm going to do three sets between eight to ten reps. But each set is something he has to endure. That first set may be kind of easy, but then when he gets to that second set, it's going to be a little bit harder. So that's what happens to us in the different seasons that we, we experience. One season may be, it may be okay, but as we go into the next season, we're going to have to endure a little bit more than we did last season. Uh -huh. That's good, that's good. And so this is all part of per persevering to the end. When I used to coach track, um, I remember some of the, the kids had to run the 1600, and that's when you run one time all the way around. Four people had to run one time around. But some of the kids, they couldn't persevere to the end. Some of them caught a, a cramp in their leg, or uh, some of them uh, just, yeah, yeah, Charlie horse, there we go, they got a Charlie horse, cramp in their stomach. Some of them just ran out of breath, they couldn't persevere to the end. But when you deal with endurance, you got to build up your endurance. Yes, yes. And so that's what God does. Each season that we, we, we experience, he's building up our endurance. Yes, yes. That's why, uh, if you look at where our life is now, and look back when we began, we, we're so much further ahead. Because of the things that we had to endure. Mm -hmm. So some of the things that we're facing in this season, they're not as hard because we built up endurance. Come on, come on. And you build up endurance when you stay in God's word. You build up endurance when you spend time with the Father through prayer. Uh -huh. And when you're fasting before him, you build up this, this, this spiritual endurance because we have to pers persevere to the end. He wants us to. Yes, yes. Persevere to the end. Yes. But the issue is everybody's talking about heaven. Everybody's talking about, I want to go. Matter of fact, we, we got a nerve to put everybody in heaven that does good. We want to put them there. Oh, they was a good brother or a good sister. Uh, rest in heaven. Yeah. It's only one way you get there. We can't put everybody in heaven. Just because they're good, that doesn't mean they're going to heaven. Come on, back, yeah. And just because they're bad, that doesn't mean they're going to hell. Mm -hmm. They're good. Well, what I want to focus on, let me say it this way. They get to heaven based upon their faith, their salvation. Mm -hmm. So we have a lot of good people we want to put there. But you know, and it's sad, we go to funerals, and they're trying to put people in heaven, and you know their life. You know they were nothing but club hopping. You know they were nothing but in the streets. You know they were selling drugs. Oh, but they, they was a good brother. They was a good sister. So, yes, rest in heaven. No, that ain't how you get there. There's only one way. And Jesus says, I am the way, the truth, and the life. Yes. You got to come through me. Some people try to take the back door to get in. Come on. Come on. But you can't take the back door to get in. You got to go in through the front door. You got to go in through the door. That door is Jesus. Yes, that's the way we get, get in there. Yes, that's good, so we got to stop putting people in heaven. And it's not our position to judge. Mm -hmm. People look at us because we know the word and we live by the word. You judging me. No way ain't judging me. The word of God judges you. Mm -hmm. That's who judges you. It's not me. It's the word of God. It's the word that is in our heart. Yes, yes. That we should not sit against thee. But we're trying to tell people, listen, this is how you're supposed to live. But they have the choice. And it's one thing to persevere without God. But we have God. We have the Holy Spirit. Mm -hmm. And so this is our advantage to persevere to the end. Yeah, yeah. Because even as we go through our struggles, even as we endure each season, the Holy Ghost is still with us. Mm -hmm. The Holy Ghost is still encouraging us. The Holy Ghost is still revealing to us this journey. And so as we get into to chapter 12 here. The, the writer here is unknown, but it is supposed that Paul is the writer because he wrote most of the New Testament. But it says, Wherefore, seeing we are also, are we compassed about with so great cloud of witnesses. And so you would have to read chapter 11 to know who these witnesses are. And you know, chapter 11 deals with um, the faith chapter. And we know it always opens up as now faith is the substance of things hoped for and the evidence of things not seen. And so we thank God for the Holy Ghost because the Holy Ghost uh, gives us, helps us realize what we're hoping for 
It's going to come to pass. Yes, yes. I don't know about you, but I'm hoping I see my Savior. I'm hoping I see the one that redeemed me, the one that saved my soul, the one that healed my body. Yes. That's what we hope for. So it's not about what faith is, it's about what faith does. Come on, come on. That's see, when, when it deals with faith, it's, it's some action that's going to follow. Mm -hmm. There's too many people saying, yeah, I got faith, I believe in God, but then where's your fruit? Where's your action? Mm -hmm. right. It just reminds me of when I went back to school. It wasn't enough to say, hey, I want to go to school, I want to graduate, all that kind of stuff. But it took me to go down to Eastern Gateway to get registered, to, to go through the financial aid. I had to go through all the steps. And so this is an example of faith and works working together. I had the faith and believe that I can graduate. Yeah. I didn't just do it for myself, but I did it for my kids. Because when my kids was in school, dad was in school. Right. And they see dad graduate, then they know, hey, look, if dad can graduate, I can graduate. Right, right. That's good, Tasha. But I had to put my faith into action. And so I had to persevere those two years. Those was two years I had to persevere. So here I am stepping out of faith. Guess what? I got to study. These are things that we miss, that we have to endure in the middle of perse persevering to the end. We just think it's a start and it's a finish. And this is the reason why some people don't persevere. Because they don't want to endure nothing. They, they want to get to the top based upon who they know. Uh-huh. And you know people that went to school, got their degree, and they got this executive position because of who they know. Right, right. They haven't endured anything. All they did was just went to college and got their paper. Oh, I'm good now because I know him. I'm there. But they're not going to be as successful as somebody that endured some things yeah. mm -hmm. and got a degree. That's good. Mm -hmm. And then you put us on top. We went through some things. And so even in the midst of enduring, you can't give up. Right. Amen, amen. Enduring is, is so important. Because it builds up endurance. Yes. This is how we're lasting. This is why we're surviving. So when we deal with here in, in chapter 11, he's talking about faith is now the substance of things hopeful. The things that we hope for, we want to see Jesus. Now, we've never, we didn't see him die on the cross. We had no physical evidence because we weren't there. But, we, but the Holy Ghost gives us hope. Holy Ghost is what reveals this to us that he did. Yes. Because he still lives, we live. Because we're in him. But as you go through this chapter, it deals with uh, one of the perfect examples about faith is dealing with Abraham. So this is the faith chapter. So in chapter 12, when it deals with where uh, compassed about with so great cloud of witnesses, these are the ones they're talking about. The God of Abraham, Jacob, and Isaac, and Jacob. Yeah. And he even talked about how Abraham, talking about faith, when he had to sacrifice his son. And before he got to the mountain, his, he already stepped out on faith and that's believed right, right. that God was going to provide a ram. Yeah. But see, that's what faith is. You have to believe in the spiritual realm. When, when you pray for something by faith, it's already done. Yes. Right. Come on, come on. We have to believe that. That's what Abraham did. He didn't know how God was going to work this out. He's only walking by faith. God, He just obeyed what God told him to do. But before he got to the mountain, God already had a ram for him. Because he already, by faith, was going to follow through what God told him to do. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. So that's when he when he got up there and he tied his son down and he's about to uh, put that knife through his son. You heard that bad, mm -hmm. that little animal. <laughs> what? Mm -hmm. Because God had, had given him, uh, as they say, a ram in the bush. He had given him a way out. That's right. And so that's what we have to do in this season. By faith, whatever you've been praying for, you have to believe by faith is already done. We're waiting for the manifestations of what we're praying for. Yeah. So you can't get weary in the process. We have to persevere to the end. But let me get back to chapter 12 now. It says, Wherefore seeing we also are compassed about with so great cloud of witnesses, talking about Abraham and them, let us lay aside every weight. Some of these weight that we're dealing with is people. Yeah. We don't want to let go of people. Yeah. We don't. We want to try to hold on to people as much as we can. We got this beautiful relationship with them, and God is telling you, listen, you need to disconnect yourself yeah. because they're hindering your perseverance right. process. Right. But you don't want to let them go because you're cool with them. Yeah. You don't want to let them go because they, they they spend time with you. But God is saying, no, you, you got to let them go. Yeah. Yeah. So some of our weights are our people. Some of our weights are stuff that we picked up because we feel this is where I, we need to do this. Mm -hmm. That ain't the weight that God gave you to pick up. Come on, Pastor. It's bad enough we got to carry our own cross, but we got a nerve to also carry on some other burdens. And then we wonder why uh, it's tough for us to endure sometimes because we got to get rid of the weight. He said, lay aside every weight. And so the weight does not necessarily mean it's sin, 
it just weighing us down. Yeah. If you ever seen a marathon runner, then sometimes the marathon runners, they will cut their hair, they will wear the, yeah. the, the, the loose or the, the lightest clothes possible yeah. because they want to persevere to the end. That's right. But see, when we got so much weight and we're trying to run this Christian race, you won't persevere with all this weight. This weight will slow you down. This weight will discourage you. Okay? So we got to lay aside these weights. And it says, and sin was do do it so easily beset us. Sin will we'll jack up the process too. This sin that we don't want to let go of. This sin that, you know, is only God knows what you're doing. So as we're running this Christian journal, we got to make up in our mind, if I'm going to persevere to the end, then I got to let go of this sin. I can't keep doing what I'm doing because it's, it's besetting me. It's almost like a flat tire. You're trying to, you're trying to get to Columbus but you won't let go of that sin. It's almost like sticking a, tie, uh, sticking a knife in your tire. Yep. And now you're on the side of the road. It's besetting you. Yeah. You've got to get to Columbus. Mm -hmm. But you don't want to let go of the weight. And you won't let go of the sin. Come on, come on, Pastor. So now we got to put the spare tire on. Mm -hmm. And the spare tire is your only hope. Mm -hmm. That's your only hope to get to Columbus. But are you willing to put the weight down? That's why it says, cast your cares upon me. Cast your weights upon me because I care for you. Are you with me on today? Amen. Because we got God wants us to persevere to the end. He wants us to. That's good, Pastor. And he says, let us run with patience or perseverance the race that is set before us. That's the reason why I opened up talking about uh, perseverance and endurance because there's a slight difference. Now, some contexts of the scripture, they put endurance there. Endurance is just the middle process. Okay? If you read from the King James, it says perseverance or patience. This is a race that we got to be patient. But the one thing I like about uh, this race evangelist is, in the natural sense, everybody's competing. Everybody's competing in the natural sense because they got to get to the end. Because they want the trophy. What I like about the race we in, it don't matter when you finish. You should have got excited right there. Because, evangelist, you may finish before I do, and I may finish after but we're still winners. Right. We still get a crown. Right. Amen. So who wouldn't want to serve a God like this that when you finish, when you yes. persevere, you're going to get a crown? Yes. Right. See, in the natural race, only one person get a crown. Mm -hmm. Only one person is going to make the front page yes. of the newspaper. Yes. But when we get, when we persevere to the end, we all make the front page. Yes. Yeah. In God's newspaper, we all make the front All our faces is on there because yes. we persevere to the end. Yes. And that's what those in the 11th chapter, Abraham, they persevered by faith to the end. By faith, Jacob, they all persevered. And, and the ultimate one that persevered was, was Jesus. And, and as we get into verse 2, it says, look unto Jesus, the author and the finisher of our faith. He's the, the beginning of our faith. Because by faith, by us believing in him, we're saved. And he's the end of our faith. When we persevere to the end, he's the end. Yes, yes. He had his own uh, race he had to run. It was his own life race. He was a trailblazer for us. He paved a role for us and said, listen, if I can persevere, you can too. Yes, yes. And the advantage that we got that some people don't have is the Holy Ghost. Mm -hmm. And I, I'm going to keep saying it is that we got the Holy Ghost. You don't have to believe in him, but he exists. Mm -hmm. People forgot about the Holy Ghost. Yes. We talk about Jesus more than the Holy Ghost. Yes, right. And so Jesus said, this is the reason why I got to go. Because y'all thinking I got to stay. Only way the Holy Ghost is going to come, I have to leave. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So now it's going to be God in us. Mm -hmm. It's God that re yet resurrected our dead bodies. Yes. So he's the author and the finisher of our faith. Thank you, Lord God. But it says, who for the joy that was set before him. Even though he's been whipped, he's been beaten, he's been spit on, he's been lied, he's been accused. He's carrying this cross with joy. Because he realizes and know once I get to the cross and I take my last breath. There, it's going to be joy because he saw us coming. He said, I got to persevere. I got to get to the cross. This was the joy that was set before him. I got to get to the cross. I got to die there. You have to pierce me in my side. You can't bring none of my bones, though. But you had to pierce me in the side. He had to persevere. Because if he doesn't persevere, we're not here. And there's no use of talking about perseverance. Amen. There's no need. And the word of God is our, our map. The word of God is what leads us and guides us. 
people are talking about don't believe in the word of God. Uh, 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 man tampered it. Man messed it all up. Okay. I still believe by faith that this is the word of God and I'm right. living by this. Right. And I'm a result of me living by this. That's why I'm still here. So you don't maybe not want to believe in the word of God, then that's your loss. Right, right. Yeah. That's not mine. Right. You can talk about a man tampered with it. No, no, this is what we got to live by, by faith. That's why it's a faith walk. Some of y'all trying to prove. That's how that, 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 that faith with Scientology. They're trying to prove all this stuff. You can't prove it. Right, right. It's by faith. Right, right. Come on, Pastor. You got to have faith. You got to believe by faith. You got to persevere by faith. You got to endure by faith. Amen. amen. You ain't got to say amen. 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 <laughs> but it says, set before him, enduring the cross, despising the shame. The death that he died was a shameful death. Yes, my God. You're talking about somebody that didn't do anything, but they accused him of everything. Accused him of blasphemy because he was God in flesh. He performed miracles. He did healings. But yet, we we're supposed to operate in the same thing. I was going to put this on Facebook, but I guess I had to say it like this. All the stuff, the catastrophes, all these people getting shot, killed in these different places. I, I see people put Facebook posts. What about the church? Why is the church speaking up now? Well, the church really can't speak up because we're divided. Uh-huh. So you expect the church to speak up as one voice, but we're divided 41,000 different right, ways. Right, right. So how do you expect us to speak as one voice? Right. Now, we get rid of these denominations and all this extra stuff that we yeah. have man has implemented and really come together and talk about the kingdom. Then maybe the church can come together as one voice. Because I guarantee you, truth is, if the church was one voice, all of this foolishness that's happening in the world wouldn't happen. So before you blame the church, right. we're, we're, we're divided. And that's why so much confusion in the body. Because we're divided. Mm -hmm. This is just a little sidebar. I get back to the text. We're divided. And this is the reason why we don't fellowship together. And so God gives me a vision. Martin Luther King had a dream, but God gave me a vision of right. trying to get the body together. Yeah. Not everybody's going to agree. That's fine. That's your choice. But this is the reason why God is bringing ministries together. That's right. Denominations are nowhere in the Bible. You can't show me. I've never seen yeah. denominations in the Bible. But I did see the kingdom. So we're of the same body. We're all supposed to be preaching the same thing. We're all supposed to be That's believing right. the same thing. We're all supposed to be operating together. Just because you're the hand and I'm the foot, we still got to work together. Come on, Pastor, break it down. Right. Because you can't lay hands on a person and need pray for if you ain't, if you ain't got my feet. Right, right. So we got to work together. Yes, yes. That's the reason why God uh, put in my heart to start empowerment services. Because we're bringing ministries together yes. to worship together. Yes. And giving those who are called to ministry an opportunity to minister. Because guess what? They're sitting in churches right now. The only one preaching is the pastor. The only one preaching is the prophet. And because they're, 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 the, they're, they're the priest of their, that, that church. So I'm the only one. I'm the only voice. No, that ain't how it operates. Evangelist Mary Luther, don't think I'm the only one preaching that sick ministry. No, you're going to get an opportunity to preach. Amen. Why? And then others. I understand at the beginning of ministry, I understand that I have to be the, the main one. But as time go on, there are those who have uh, uh, something from God as well. God has been pouring into them. And they have something to say. So I can't be the only one. I can't do everything. I can't. But this is the vision that God has given me. Bringing the body of Christ together. Let's get rid of the denominations. Yes. It's not biblical, so why are we doing it? They want to argue it, then they show me in the Bible. It's not biblical. We're supposed to serve the same God. Right. Worship together. Baptists ain't worshiping with Kojic. Because uh -uh. we believe in speaking in tongues and y'all don't. So what? Bible, Paul said, do all speak in tongues? Yeah. Do all prophesy? Yeah. Yeah. That's what Paul said. So if we're going to follow the teachings of a, a, Apostle Paul. He said it himself. Do we all do this? Yeah. Prophet William Dallas uh, operates in a, in a heavy prophetic gift. Yeah. Okay, then that's his gift. Yeah. My gift is teaching. Yeah. That's my strength. So I'm supposed to teach. Yeah. 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 He's supposed
supposed to prophesy. But just because he prophesies better than I do, that's his gift. We serve the same God. I may prophesy too, but not at his level. But I got to stay in my lane. My lane is teaching. That's my strength. That's what God has called me to do. Everybody has a responsibility in the kingdom. Just stay in your lane. And if we stay in our lane, we can build the kingdom. But we won't persevere to the end because we keep fighting against one another. We won't forgive one another. We don't want to fellowship with one another. But then we're talking about I'm going to heaven. You got to repent first. Talking about your brother. Instead of talking about him, pray for him. And if the issue concerns you that much, yeah, pray for him. That's what you should do. But nobody want to tell them to do that. We just gossip and talk about it. No, that's not the godly way of doing it. Right. Let me get back to the text. I like that sidebar. Hope you liked it. That was the Holy Ghost. <laughs> it's set down at the right hand of the throne of God. So now that he has persevered to the end, now he's sitting on the right hand of the Father. He's done what he's supposed to do. But now it continues because now he's the mediator between us and God. So, now I have an opportunity to go to God for myself. I'm saying this because you shouldn't have to wait for me as your pastor. Oh, I got to call the pastor before he can pray for me. I got to call the pastor so he can lay hands on me. No. Hallelujah that you have that much uh, God confidence in me. But you need to go to God for yourself. Uh -huh. He didn't rent the veil for us to keep coming to the high priest. You are a high priest now. Yeah, yeah. Now you go to God. Yeah. If you can't get to your the pastor or whoever else you're trying to get to, then you go to God for yourself. Yes. Because uh, if you have an established prayer life, then your prayers will get through just as if the pastor was praying for you. Mm -hmm. But most people won't tell you this. You know why? Because they want you to keep coming to them. It, it puffs up their ego. Yeah, they, they, they're coming to me for prayer. No. I tell people, pray for yourself. Mm -hmm. I'll be praying for you, but pray for yourself. Mm -hmm. This is truth. This is what we should be telling people to do to help them establish a good prayer life. Yes, yes. You shouldn't have to, I'm going to be real, you shouldn't have to call me talking about, I'm not saying this has happened, I'm looking at future tense. What car shall I buy? Why are you asking me? <laughs> the father that we serve owns everything. Go to him. Look at your financial budget. God gives us wisdom. Yeah, you want the Lexus, but the Lexus is $500 a month. You might have to take that Ford Escort, and it's $250. But the same God is still providing for you. So go to him and ask. Yes, yes. But it's by faith. I'm preaching it's by faith because we have to persevere to the end. We have to. And it's important for the body to come together so we can persevere to the end. It should not be based upon what church you go to. Oh, they ain't going to heaven. That church ain't going to heaven. They don't believe what we believe. How could you say that? How? If they have accepted Christ as their personal Savior, then they are saved. The Holy Spirit is now on the inside. Now, you have to build that relationship up. You have to begin to thirst and hunger after righteousness. I'm preaching truth. This is in the Bible. This is not no dog, but this ain't no made up stuff. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. I'm preaching what's in the word and how God wants us to operate in his body. Yeah. But here is Jesus on the right hand. He's on the right hand of the throne of God. So now he's in position mediating for us. So as we pray, our king of kings and lord of lords are interpreting for us. Because there are some times when we pray, we may not even say anything. Because we're in so much pain. Yeah. We're going through so much, we don't know what to pray for. We don't know what to say. Mm -hmm. But God knows. Jesus knows. He's that mediator. So, God wants us to persevere to the end. Yes. But we can't give up in the endurance state. As we're enduring different things, don't give up. Yeah. I would tell my wife with her business, now the Lord has blessed her where it's starting to pick up. Yeah. But she has to persevere to the end. She has to endure every season of business that she's experiencing. Every season. There are seasons for her business. 
And so she has to endure. She can't give up in the midst of enduring. I am concerned. Pastor Mary Lugo, I know you're taking the role of evangelist right now, but you have to endure the seasons of an evangelist. You have to endure the seasons of a pastor. There's seasons that we have to endure. They're not going to be pretty seasons. They're not. You're going to have sometimes more people fighting against you than with you. But you still got to endure. You still got to keep fighting. You still got to keep praying. Yeah. And so what God has put on my heart is to encourage you. Yeah. Because sometimes we wake up, we're ready to throw in the towel. Sometimes we wake up, we're just ready to give up. Come on, Pastor. This whole ministry thing, we're ready to just like, man, throw it up. Throw, throw, just, just, just forget it. Yeah. And I don't brag, but I've been in ministry for, for some time, starting at a young age. Yeah. And I, I saw how I learned how to endure Sometimes I have some rough weeks, but I still have to endure. I have to. We have people that are assigned to us or looking at us. And if we don't endure, they don't endure. So this is how much of a price it is. See, when you tell God yes and I'll go, you really sometimes don't know what you're getting yourself into. Some of us just, you, you see so much stuff on TV. We see all the fame, the glory, and then we're like, yeah, 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 I, I, I want that. Come on, come on. I want the fame. I want to be on TV. No, because it's a heavy price. Mm -hmm. But you're going to have to endure some things even to be on TV. Yeah. Are you willing to endure it? But God says we have to persevere, so if we have to persevere, then that means we have to endure every season. Go ahead and stand to your feet. I'm done. We have to endure. I'm only encouraging you. You have to persevere to the end, and you have to endure every single season that you're experiencing. Yes, so, Father God, my prayer right now, Father God, is for, for your people, Father God. You, you know the, the ministry that you've called them to do, Father God. You know the call on their life. Um, you, you, you know, Father God. And I'm praying right now for them. If they thought about giving up, they thought about just throwing in the child, the, the towel. They thought about saying, what's the use? I'm praying right now, Lord God, that this message that you spoke will encourage them to keep enduring, to build up more endurance, to rely more on your word and what your word says, and to live by your word, to learn how to pray more, even when they feel weak, yeah. when they feel down. When things ain't going the way they want it to go. I'm even praying right now for them, Father God. That you yet strengthen them. Because the joy of that you give us strengthens us. It's a joy that the world didn't give to us. And since the world didn't give it to us, the world can't take it away. And so, Lord, teach us how to stir up the joy that is within us. And that joy that's within us can be stirred up through your word and, and through praise and through worship. Because through those rough times, it's your joy that's going to strengthen us through this process. Yes. Teach us how to endure, Father God. Because enduring is uncomfortable. Enduring is painful. Enduring hurts. Because when we look at endurance, Father God, we, we see things we don't like in us yes. and in the process. But we know because of your Holy Spirit being with us, we're not enduring alone. Yes, so that gives us hope that whatever season that we're in, that we're going to in, get through that season. We're going to endure that season. That you're, the season that we're enduring is preparing us for the next season. Yes. Preparing us for the next level in you. That we cannot get comfortable, Father God, where we are. We cannot get comfortable. So I'm just praying for your people, Father God that you start a fire in them to yes. pray more. You start a fire in them to study your word more. You start a fire in them to encourage somebody else about how good you are. Yes. You start this fire in them, Father God. Start a fire in them that they want to draw closer to you, Father God, and not to the world. Understanding that the things that you give to us, the things that you provide to us is, is everlasting. It never runs out.
But the things of this world that we may be holding on to, the weights of this world, they're temporal and they're weighing us down. So I'm just praying for your people, Father God. Just strengthen them right now, Father God, in the name of Jesus. Strengthen them, Father God. Uplift them even right now. Even if they have fallen, for the, Father God, pick them up and dust them off. And tell them to keep enduring until they persevere. These things we ask in Jesus' name. Amen. Come on in. Let's put a praise in the atmosphere. Come on, we can get louder than that. You got to endure until the end. Glory to your name. You see, you can't be afraid to open your mouth and say, Hallelujah. Your hallelujah shifts the atmosphere. Your hallelujah is, is, is shifting things in your life. It's shifting your finances. It's shifting your marriage. So that's why you say hallelujah. It's shifting things that you've been praying for on your job. It's shifting things. Your hallelujah aligns things that was out of alignment. So that's why you got to say hallelujah. Hallelujah. This is the reason why we must give him praise. Because the enemy is always scheming, he's always up to something. So when you give God praise and mess up everything he's thinking about and everything he's trying to do, you got demons that are assigned to your life to cause havoc and hell in your life. So this is the reason why you gotta give God praise. Because when you give God praise, that the demon on that head backs up. Because he can't be in the same presence when you're praising God. Most people won't tell you that. They will just let you go through this race, stumbling and falling, not picking you up, not praying for you, not encouraging you. But we must encourage one another. I'm not going to let you fall because God didn't let me fall. He says, now unto him who is able to keep you from falling. So some of us, if we're tired of falling in sin, you don't have to keep falling. He says, I'm able to keep you from falling. I'm able to keep you from smoking. I'm able to keep you from drinking. I'm able to keep you from lying. But you've got to make the decision that you're tired of lying. You're tired of drinking. You're tired of sinning. You expect God to do everything. But then you don't want to stop what you're doing. At some point, you gotta want to stop. At some point, you don't have to keep sinning. I know we may fall short, but get up. Because you gotta finish the race. You gotta persevere to the end. So what you lied, repent. Tell the person the truth. Get up. So you can persevere to the end. Do what it takes to persevere. Do what it takes. I'm tired of seeing people fall mm -hmm. and then the church lets them stay there. Yeah. And just talk about them. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Instead of lending a helping hand. Say, so, mm -hmm. come on, brother. I failed too. Get up. Yeah. Matter of fact, you too weak to dust yourself off. I dust you off. Come on, Pastor. Come on. Now come on. Yeah. Come on. We got to endure together. So sometimes you may have to hold their hand or walk yeah. with them. You're, we're still enduring. Yeah. They ain't slowing me down until they're able to walk by themselves. Yeah. Yeah. Come on, Some people have fallen and they need to be ministered to. Yeah. But you won't minister to them, but you will talk about them. Yeah. Oh, they're a fornicator. Oh, he cheated. He did that. Well, why not sit the brother or sister down and minister to them? Yeah. Come on. Mm -hmm. We're quick to put them in front of the church to confess the sin. Uh huh. Come on. But we are never to minister to them. The pastor of the church that's calling that brother or sister before the church to confess the sin should be in, should be the one ministering to him, but encouraging the congregation to say, listen, let's continue to encourage him. Yep. At least we fall in the same thing. See, we think because we've been elevated a little bit that we are not subject to fall. Right, come on. <laughs> come on now. Yes, you will. So that's why you got to have compassion and love. At least you fall in the same thing. And I got tired of seeing people fall. Because I was one that failed. Nobody wanted to take the time out. But they would, they would run your name all around Youngstown. You know, Youngstown ain't but so big. But 
But I never heard one person say, brother, I'm praying for you. I heard about it. Are you okay? They didn't do that. So then I had to learn how to endure that season. So I can keep persevering to the end. See, you got to want to persevere for yourself. Yes, come on. You got to want it. When I played football and basketball, I wanted it. In the off season, I trained. I worked hard to get ready for the season. It's the same thing spiritually. I want it. I was almost like Paul. The, the same zeal and passion he had persecuting the Christians. Then he had this Damascus Road experience. And God, uh, Holy Ghost changed his life. So now the same desire he had to persecute, now he's preaching to the Christians. Yeah. Come on. So the same passion and desire that I had to play sports and give my time to sports is the same desire and passion and hunger that I have for God and for God's Hallelujah. kingdom and for God's people. Thank you. Because I want y'all to come back next week. I do. I want y'all to come back next week. So remember August 13th, 1030, our worship service starts at 11 o'clock. We want to Minister uh, Montana is giving a, a brief intro service. So we still have worship, but we try to cut it short a little bit. Just so we can do the gift bag giveaway. So um, if you have kids, niece, nephew, they need book bags, supplies, my daughter has done a wonderful job behind the scenes uh, preparing these book bags. She's part of the youth ministry here at Sig Ministries. I've given her the big responsibility uh, getting her prepared. Giving you little ideas or things that you can, you can do. But uh, she's preparing the book bag. I got a phone call this past week. Somebody's going to be donating their money this time to be purchasing their book bag. Amen. So our service will start at 10 30. We have three groups of worship part of it. I'm going to, uh, God has already gave me the word for that day. Uh, the day that you can So uh, I'm going to be there. next week. Amen. Amen.